Being nervous, feeling fear, having anxiety and feeling pressure as a goalkeeper is probably the most normal thing about being a goalkeeper. In this video, I'll give you some actionable advice, tips and strategies that you can apply to your goalkeeping game so that you can overcome your fear of playing football as a goalkeeper. So watch till the end. I think you'll like this one. So let's face it, being a goalkeeper in football is probably one of the most frightening positions all across sports. In this video, I'm gonna help you overcome the most common fears that goalkeepers face, be it in training, be it in matches, or just in life in general. Fear as a goalkeeper is probably the most normal thing about being a goalkeeper. And by you admitting these fears, you're already one step ahead of 95% of goalkeepers who have the same fears. I used to be very afraid of playing football, which hindered me playing up to the best of my abilities. So I know exactly how it feels to feel fear. In training, it was very easy. I loved training. My team was almost always winning. But when I got to matches, I didn't always feel that I was at the peak of my performance. And this was down to fear. I was afraid every time there was a goal kick because I didn't work enough on my distribution. And every time there was a goal kick, I felt like everyone was watching me. And every time I didn't get the length, the distance, the height of my goal kick, it was almost as if I could hear the people in the crowd talking about it, even though this was only going on in my head. I was simply afraid of playing football, which once led to me retiring from football when I was only 23 years of age. I couldn't handle the unrealistic pressure that I put on myself. Every time I let a goal in, I felt like it was my fault. Thankfully, I started playing football again. As I got older and more experienced, I got to the national team and they had a sports psychologist who really helped me dive deep into the root of my problems. And after this, football actually became fun. It was a lot easier to play games. I didn't feel the same nerves as I did before. I didn't feel anxious before games. I could now relax and just focus on my football and being the best goalkeeper that I could be. This also led to some championships and also being voted goalkeeper of the year in my country. Something that I never ever thought that I could achieve before starting believing in myself. The first step to overcome the fear is to accept the fear as a part of the game. When you realize that all goalkeepers have felt this way at some point in their career, it will also become a lot easier to accept. One of my favorite goalkeeping quotes comes from Gigi Buffon when he said, everyone is afraid sometimes if they say otherwise, they are lying. Now that you know that feeling fear is normal in football, it's time for you to do something about it. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to reflect on what makes you afraid. It can be pre-game nerves, you might be afraid of making mistakes. You might be afraid of letting your teammates down, your coach, your family, whatever it should be. It's time for you to reflect on what makes you nervous. Once you've found what makes you feel fear, I want you to go and write it down on a piece of paper, in a book. And when you realize what makes you feel fear, I want you to go even deeper. Why do you feel these fears? Is it maybe because you have a weaker diving side? Are you maybe afraid of getting hit by the ball? Are you maybe afraid of going out for crosses? Whatever it should be, I want you to write it down so you can start working on it. Once you've identified what makes you feel this fear, it's time to set clear and realistic goals on how to overcome this fear. For example, if you have a weaker diving side, you can set a goal that you'll practice diving at least three times a week. This is a great goal to set yourself and something that all goalkeepers should do, but we want to break the goal into even smaller steps than that. Think of your goals as a step in a staircase. If you want to get to one place, you have to take all the other steps to get to the top of the staircase. So for example, if you want to get better at catching high balls, your first goal should be to work on your timing. Your next goal should be to work on your vertical jump to get as high as possible. Then you should work on catching the ball as high as possible. And in the end, you can even work on catching the ball under pressure, making it a real game scenario. This is only one example. You can obviously break every goal into smaller steps. By doing this, the goal doesn't seem so unrealistic or daunting, but if you focus on each step in the staircase, it becomes a lot easier for you to reach each small step before getting to the top of the staircase. So far, if you find this video valuable, please do like this video, please do subscribe to our channel, and let's continue the video. So now you've identified what makes you nervous, the route to your problems, and also set realistic, 
clear goals on how to overcome them, it's now time to develop your positive mindset. When I was younger, I used to blame myself for every goal that I conceded. Whether I had the fault or it was someone else, I used to talk negatively to myself. I used to shout at myself. I used to have inner thoughts telling myself that I was not good enough. I was slow. My goal kicks were bad. And even when I got the ball, but instead of keeping the ball first time, but bounced it to the ground, I used to tell myself, why can't you catch the ball properly? All these negative thoughts, all this negative self-talk developed a fear inside myself. In the end, as I kept telling myself all these things, my mind started believing it. So I don't want you to commit the same mistakes which I did. Start developing a positive self-talk. Instead of telling yourself that you're not good enough, tell yourself that you're working hard every day to improve your game. And maybe if you have a weaker diving side, Instead of telling yourself that you can't dive to that side, tell yourself that you're working hard every day to practice that side so one day it will become as good as your good diving side. Having a positive self-talk is crucial in overcoming anxiety and pre-game nerves to make you perform to the best of your abilities. If you haven't clicked the link in the description, I advise you to do so now. There's some really valuable free stuff, some insights that you probably won't find anywhere else without paying for it. Click the link in the description, it's free. All you have to do is enter your email address and I'll send the free guides to your inbox. Another strategy that I discovered far too late is visualization. Visualization is when you use your brain to picture successful outcomes. For example, if your distribution is not good enough, you can actually lay in your bed at home, visualizing a successful goal kick and become better at kicking goal kicks. If you're not familiar with visualization, this might seem odd, but the better you become at visualization and the more realistic your image in your brain becomes, the harder the brain has to distinguish between what's real and what's your imagination. So you can actually lay in your bed practicing your goal kicks. This will massively increase your abilities as a goalkeeper and also help you overcome any nerves or anxiety that you have about being a goalkeeper. You can use visualization every night 10 minutes before you fall asleep. This is a great way of falling asleep, but it's also a great way of becoming a better and less nervous goalkeeper. The last technique or strategy that I want to talk about is mindfulness. In more common terms, it's also called breathing. Mindfulness or breathing is when you sit by yourself, you have your headphones on and you're fully focused on being present, about being in the now and forgetting everything else. When you practice mindfulness or breathing, the way I learned it is to inhale in four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds and then slowly breathe out for four seconds and again hold your breath for four seconds and do it all over again. In the beginning, this might seem hard, but as you get more and more used to it, you can use it wherever you want. I especially used it before games, when after the tactical meeting, I went by myself and I sat there for 10 or 15 minutes with my headphones on, only thinking about the game. And I used my breathing to calm my nerves as I naturally am very nervous before games. This massively helped me to relax before games. And also during games, especially if my team was leading by one goal and you get these thoughts, you can't concede a goal now, what if I make a mistake? I used the breathing to relax myself and just think about the next ball, the next ball, the next ball. So mindfulness is not only a strategy that you can use before games, but it's also a strategy that you can use during games. These strategies have helped me massively throughout my goalkeeping career. I'm just sad that I didn't figure them out before. Then I could utilize them even before in my career. But now you know them. Now you can use them to calm your nerves, play to the best of your abilities, to relax before games and during games. So that was the video, guys. I hope you got some insights that you can apply to your goalkeeping game to make you a better goalkeeper. If you found any value in this video, please do subscribe to our channel, like this video, and also use the comment section to ask me any questions about anything goalkeeping related. And I'll do my very best to answer you as soon as possible and to the best of my abilities. If you want to watch the next video on our channel, please do click the link above my head here somewhere. Until next time, guys, and I'll see you soon.